All right, guys. Welcome back. We are live uh, with another online art class with Jamaica Center for Arts and Learning. Um, glad to have you with us. Uh, I'm just enjoying my coffee right now. Thinking about what to paint. Um, one thing I want to go through with you today is hands. Hands are very important. They're very expressive. And you can do a lot with hands. You can do almost anything and everything with these hands, right? So we need to study them. We need to learn them. You know, hands are hard to draw. There's many different components, many different shapes that we have to combine to create the whole hand. But if we learn how to draw the hand, then we'll learn not only anatomy, we'll, but we'll learn foreshortening, we'll learn perspective, and we'll learn different shapes. So hands have always been very difficult. I think every artist has problems with hands, and I think that's why every artist needs to focus on hands. Now, even the most ancient cave paintings were of hands, and they literally took their own hand and they put it on the wall, and they had ground up powder, colored powder into fine pigment, and they put it in a little bamboo shoot, and they blow the color out onto the onto the uh, wall of the cave and what do you see you see their handprint and some of these handprints have lasted for tens of thousands of years 30,000 years some of the oldest indigenous artists uh, all over the world developed this method of a self-portrait, essentially. A way to mark their existence, a way to say, hey, I'm here. And then art developed further from that. And artists started to do cave paintings of buffalo and bison and all sorts of wild animals, the animals that they lived off of. I'm just doing a very primitive cave art here, but the development of the art turned into line. They took literal burnt wood and primitive materials, right? Simple. Just using whatever you have around you to create. And they found that burnt wood made for a fine drawing tool. So we want to come back to the hands. We want to develop our hand just the same way our ancestors developed their art and their craft. And the things that I'm talking about today are our ideas and techniques that have been developed throughout history and throughout time. And I think it was uh, Benjamin Franklin who said, if there's one reason we can see so far, it's because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So all this information is just stuff that I've learned that has just really is just information that has been passed down through the ages. And now you might be wondering what these are. Let's talk about these real quick. Well, this was a experiment uh, I did on a piece of paper. It, it did rip, unfortunately, but I just had this idea of wanting to draw a speed racer going through the landscape. And so I taped up this little piece of paper and had this idea of this futuristic uh, flying car going through the sky. And you can see everything is very quick. And if you can move 
quickly and yet um, precisely, then you can really say a lot with a little. And that's what I'm kind of going for with these drawings. You can see here the glitter glue that I used for Raphael's mask. I used uh, the glue and um, food coloring mixture, my little glue and food coloring mixture to, to do the green and so, some of the red here, but I found that the glitter glue really added a nice texture and a nice touch. Um, I also sprayed it to get some kind of splatter effect. It looks, you know, like there's a lot going on. His mask is kind of coming off. I'm, I'm starting to, oh yeah, this is a uh, nail polish that I uh, floated. You can float nail polish in, in the glue. And this is kind of a glitter nail polish. Um, and you can move it around while it dries. You know, it does take a while to dry. If you have a, a heat gun, that's even better. Um, a heat gun will help your, uh, you to work on your piece faster. Otherwise that glue does take a, a, a while to dry. So if you, you can work on multiple pieces at once, um, and that way, you know, you can start to work faster. Um, all right, I want to get back to hands. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about those pieces here. Uh, later on, we're going to do a, a big painting using spray paint and uh, other techniques that we've learned throughout the series and uh, just see what we create. You know, just see, we just want to see how we feel and see what comes out. That's the, the most fun way to paint, I think. Uh, and, and not everyone might want to work that way. Um, other people uh, might need a little more concrete direction. And so you can give yourself tasks and things to do in order to carry out the art that you want to make. But um, what I want to talk about now is hands. So when we, uh, when we want to draw a hand, especially if we draw one, we can use our own hand as a model. And we can also uh, draw from photos. But I find that drawing your own hand uh, is really helpful. I am left-handed, so I tend to draw my right hand a lot. So, um, but you can also switch it up and see how that goes. Uh, so let's talk about the shapes of the hand. Uh, when, I, when I look at, at the hand, I'm seeing the basic shapes. I want to break down my hand into simple shapes that I can draw. So I can really just, this is actually a shape in itself here, this little triangle. It's like a triangle. And I don't know if you guys remember like the body glove, uh, body glove clothing line, their logo was like a hand that was broken up into shapes like this, if I remember correctly. And now let's look at our fingers. The thumb, we have really one, two, three, one section. So we have this section here by the fingernail, this section here between the, the knuckle and your, whatever this is called. See, this is why it's helpful to learn anatomy. But we have three sections, one, two, three. One, two, and then three. Just like we have here, three sections. One, two, three. These are little digits. So if we look, we really just wanna study our, our fingers and see where those knuckles are. And look how these knuckles go from bigger to smaller. And this, the way that this tends to um, go from little to big is the same ratio as, as the golden ratio where you get smaller to bigger. And that, you know, fits inside of this grand scheme of universal design that exists within the universe and that exists within our anatomy. Um, we are of the universe, so it makes sense that 
uh, our bodies follow these the same design principles as the universe, such as uh, the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is found all throughout nature um, in seashells, in flowers, uh, in clouds, you name it. Uh, so anyway, these knuckles, bigger to smaller, right? It, som sometimes I forget that and I draw all three knuckles the same size, but that's not right. So let's really line it up and, and really kind of see where these knuckles are. I remember um, my dad talking about, uh, he visited the caves of, of Altamira and um, in, in France, I believe. And <clears throat> I think they're, they don't allow people in there anymore, but he was in there with his dad and they turned off the lights. And uh, my grandpa flipped a, a, flipped a match and lit the cave with just that match and, and the, the, the animals in there seemed to dance because of the movement of the flame. And I just remember how, how cool of an experience that might've been. So I'm just reminded of that as I'm drawing this hand, right? We're, we're, we're connecting to like, when, when we're learning about ourselves and when we're learning about art and the techniques that make us into the artists that we are, we, we're connecting to uh, our ancestors and those who came before us and all the knowledge that existed before us. And, and, and that's a significant thing, you know? So anyway, all right, we're learning the hands, we're, we're learning the digits of the fingers, uh, we're learning where the knuckles are, where the palm of the hand uh, separates from the fingers. And, and notice, here that even this is different um if on this side if you if you see here these two are lined up it might be different for you your hands might be lined up differently that's why it's important to study your hands and study other people's hands too other people have fascinating hands and you can really tell a lot uh from someone's hands uh so I'm looking at my hands and I'm seeing that these two are kind of lined up at an angle and then these two kind of are lined up at an angle. So it goes up, down. It's almost like a, at an angle slightly. But if we're simplifying things, really we can just draw a straight line. But I'm noticing the angle here. So I just, I'm just paying attention to that. Um, and look at the fold in the hands. If you fold your hand in half, look, your fingers basically go to the palm. So that would mean this is the halfway point of the hand right here. So this, we can figure out that this is two sections here. One and two, one and two. All right. So now that we can see these sections, I'm just kind of going to take this out just because I want to simplify things. That's the name of the game. I want to simplify. And I want things to be kind of uniform as well. Look at the spacing here in the hands. This is a, a little more spaced out. This is the most spaced out. But they're all kind of even. And my fingers are mostly the the same width, so consistency in the digits. But now I can take this, put it aside, and I can draw my own hand. And this is okay if we're drawing on a 2D surface or drawing flat, but say I wanna draw my hand at an angle. Say I wanna draw it coming at you. You know, say I wanna draw it like this. Well, now that we understand the different sections, we can keep that in mind and use that as a kind of x-ray. Um, so with my x-ray vision, I'm going to draw my hand uh, using the shapes I know exist in those places. And I'm gonna draw my hand uh, at a funky angle. So let's find an angle. My, now my angle from my point of view is going to be more like this. It's gonna, yours is a little, gonna be a little different. So, 
just bear with me here. I have to be my own hand model. So let's draw a hand like this. I kind of like the way that this looks. So I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna draw my sections of the hand. They bend. The sections of the hand bend slightly, but I know that they're there. So I'm gonna start with the wrist, put my elbow on the paper to hold it. I'm gonna start with my wrist and I'm gonna draw that first square section that I know is there. One, and it bends. I'm gonna draw bigger for you guys. And like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with my thumb. Oh, I'm gonna divide up the palm again. I see the curve of the palm is more like this. Okay, so now I don't need to do that. I'm getting into the details. I need to think about my major sections. Remember the triangle here? That triangle is foreshortened now, so it's going to look a little different, but I know that it's there. So I'm gonna use my X-ray vision and this triangle is gonna come out like that and then like this. So there's my X-ray vision at work. Okay, now for the thumb, my thumb is foreshortened. So some of these shapes, remember these little digits here are going to be slightly different in, in, in size. Uh, so be aware of how they look at different angles. Those shapes will look different at different angles. And remember, I'm thinking about it as a 3D shape at the same time. Try to think about it as a 3D shape. So this is my little 3D box here. Now I'm going to add the um, fingernail here and look at the shape of it. Look at how the knuckle bends. That knuckle really kind of juts out and then comes in, but I see the fingernail the shape of the fingernail coming in like so. I, I think it's important to indicate the fingernail um, to see where that goes. And this, I wanna think about 3D, right? 3D shape, 3D shape, 3D shape. Just keep telling yourself that. You gotta talk to yourself. You're, you're not crazy for talking to yourself. You, um, some of the most intelligent people talk to themselves. All right, so I'm trying to hold my hand steady here. I'm drawing my 3D shapes. Um, all right, now I'm getting into the digits on the fingers. So now that I know my digits, excuse me, I'm going to uh, draw my 3D shapes, my 3D digits, 3D shape, 3D shape. All right, I'm looking at the size and relationship of my finger, so of the digits. So there's one, maybe just start with the simple shape that you see first, two, remember they're gonna be at angles. So the shapes are gonna be slightly different and I'm thinking about the 3D-ness of it. This one just kind of goes up. So I'm seeing this one just kind of flat. All right, there's my sections, my three sections. And now look at this. I made this longer than this one. Why did I do that? Because it's at an angle. And this is really the top of it that I'm looking at. Remember, it's foreshortened. So if, if this is the top of the box, then I'm looking down, down at an angle at this box here. So it's going like that. Think about your perspective. Um, think about your 3D shapes, um, but only after you think about your initial shape. It's more important to get that simple initial shape out first and then work your way into the details. All right, so now this one is really gonna be foreshortened for me. And then uh, these two as well. So I'm really having to look at the relationship 
of the fingers. So I'm looking at the negative space as well. And this finger, I need to fix this. This finger here, uh, this is that top digit and I'm looking directly at it. So this is the top of the box and I'm looking down at the next digit. So the only thing that I really see is this first digit uh, next to the palm. And then this is basically the fingernail here. This is the fingernail here, um, but even less so. All right, so now I'm going to draw the third, uh, fourth finger. And I'm looking at the negative space. I'm looking at the relationship. I'm thinking about my, look at how these line up. Your digits have to line up, but I'm not even really seeing the first digit. I'm seeing the second digit at the knuckle and it's going this way, it's coming towards me. So I'm looking at the top of the, of the digit is here. So here's the, the digit with the nail. So that this is the nail here. And now it actually, it helps to close one eye if you close one eye, then you can kind of flatten the image that you're looking at and look at the relationships uh, between the shapes. So here's the one digit and the second. And now all I really see of this first one is where it connects to the finger. And this I actually drew a little bit big but I'll fix that with my fourth. And this one's really coming at me. This is the knuckle and it's coming. So now you gotta look at the relationship. Ooh, I moved my hand. <laughs> so that kind of changes everything. So I have to fix this. So if you're your own hand model, it helps to hold still, right? So I do see the relationship here a little bit better. So here's the first digit, the second, and then the third is overlapping, right? Overlapping is a word that you're gonna have in, have in your mind because these digits are going to be overlapping. Oof. I'm glad we're doing this because I'm having a hard time with the hands. All right, so there it's overlapping, overlapping here and here. All right, so now I move my hands. All right, I have to go back to the drawing board and I made some mistakes. So what I'm going to do now is figure out that relationship to simplify it even more and get that information down quick because I moved my hand to the point where I lost it. So I have to get that info down quick. And I did this line here to help me figure out that the relationship in the bend of the hands of the fingers. So looking at the relationship here at where they join at the knuckle. Okay. And now I'm drawing the first digit. The second and the third. All right, now first, the 
second is here. Remember, we have to, I forgot about my shapes. I, I have to talk about my shapes. Remember to simplify or you're gonna, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one. Two, three. We did it. Yes, you guys, you have to respect the models, the art models. There, it's hard work to to hold it still for that long. All right. So I'm fixing it up now. Now that we got our shapes down, woo, hands are hard. That's why we got to practice them. Practice makes perfect. All right. So now I'm just fixing my shapes. And if we go back, let's look at that light. Nah, let's, well, yeah, real quick, let's do the shading, but I wanna do another one because if it's hard and you struggle through it, it just means you gotta do it again. All right, so I just wanted to real quick get the, the shadow in on there. Sometimes if I really want to move fast, I grab my can. Um, and now this is like a very heavy spray, but I'm going to look at my, just real quick, look at the shadow. And then Pull that out there. See, now you can turn your studies into like little works of art. Remember the uh, paper technique like this. Yeah, see? What? What turns out, you know, to be weird at first can sometimes turn into be the coolest things. Always keep an open mind. Ooh, see, like now this is kind of turning ethereal. Like there's there's something going on with. Oh, interesting. Uh, like there's uh, some energy coming out of the hand. Um, every little mistake can be an opportunity. You just have to have an open mind. Um, I usually don't recommend uh, rubbing the paint with your finger. Um, but in this case, I just want to move fast. Oof, this is cool. All right, so. I'm gonna move on in just a second, but sometimes you just have fun with something and, and uh, see, so look at the paint bubbling up a little bit. And then I can just go ahead and draw a little arm. Um, you can grab a little paintbrush at this moment, too, if you wanted to. All right, <clears throat> so that's that was kind of fun. Um, let's do another one. Let's do another hand. Um, sometimes hands from the side are cool. Like in this way, we can both look at the same angle together. So I'll draw the hand um, from the side. I'm gonna keep using this. This is a nice little road map that you can use to guide you on your way. Um, so let's uh, let move this out the way. 
Sometimes you can even paint, paint, paint the hand. Let's try doing that. Um, let's just paint, paint it in there. We're gonna try a different technique this time. And uh, I'm gonna use like this nice flat brush, this flathead brush here. This is uh, a bright, a bright brush called a bright brush. Um, all right, so I don't wanna start with just black. I wanna start with uh, a little bit of gray because I'm gonna, that's my mid-tone. So I'm gonna mix up a little gray here. And then I can come in with the white and the black for my highlights and shadows. All right, so we'll start with a little gray. Um, I'm going to just basically paint my shapes in. So I'm gonna look at my hand like this. Um, I guess our angle will be slightly different, um, but I'm looking at it like this like as if it's from the side. So I'm gonna start with the thumb because that's kind of the most prominent shape. So I'm going to paint the middle section of the thumb and then the section with the nail. So here's kind of the middle section and the section with the nail. Pay attention, to, I'm paying attention to the silhouette of the shape. Silhouettes are very important. This is the middle knuckle. It curves in a little bit. And then there's that little, this is the triangle part right here. It comes down over uh, and then it goes down like this. So that's basically the triangle section. All right. Now the skin folds over like this into that main palm and now this palm is at a really hard angle so i'm not going to really see the uh squareness of it but it, i'm looking at its relationship to that triangle section that i know is there so i know the end of the palm is going to come here i see my wrist go over here and it's at least this wide. So look at the shape of the triangle compared to the width of what you see. I'm closing my eye and I'm noticing that it actually angles in. So it's not going to be like a perfect rectangle. Try not to move my hand. <laughs> I have to try to keep it still. Okay, so it, it uh, this is the wrist, it angles in. It comes in here. This angles in. It's not a perfect rectangle, but look, I'm noticing where my thumb meets, and you can actually do this with your brush. Noticing where the thumb meets with my uh, knuckle of the pointer finger. So the so here this meets with there, the end of the palm essentially. I'm gonna load up my brush. You can be very loose at this point because we're just establishing. And the more lo loose you can be, the more free, um, the more quick you can be, and um, the mo more easily you can correct mistakes at, uh, when they happen or, or use those mistakes to, to uh, find a new way. All right, so I'm gonna draw my pointer finger. Here's the first digit. Um, it starts here and here. So this is the first digit. Then it angles at the knuckle this way. Here's the second digit. And then the third. And notice that this one is smaller. It's at a slight angle. Okay, now I'm looking at the relationship between the pointer finger, there's that knuckle there and there, uh, and the middle finger. This knuckle, this knuckle here, I'm seeing jut out here, so I know that this is the second, this is the middle finger here. 
Um, it starts here based on my perspective and then kind of goes like this and this. All right, and then here's the third digit with the nail. Okay, and this comes out far. So now the third finger starts here. That's the first because my knuckle, uh, my palm is bending. This is the palm. First digit, second digit, third. Let's clean it up. Uh, or let's get the relationship first. Uh, and then this comes out. This. Oh, I'll move my hand. Let's get it back. Oops. All right, and here's my, I moved it again, oh gosh. Okay, so I'll just say this is here. And All right. Okay, so let's clean that up. This would be more like that. Okay, let's let's add some shadows. Um, let's look at my hand again. How do I space it out? Okay, this actually should go here, here, here. That's mostly right. Okay, so there's the shadow there. I'm just talking to myself, you know, trying to uh, not get caught up in the details. I have to constantly remind myself to start with the big picture stuff first and then work my way to the details, those dirty details. And I'm looking at the shadows now. The, I'm, I'm squinting my eyes and I'm really looking at uh, the shadows. Uh, those are all important right now. And now that we're getting those shadows in there, now you notice it's really starting to take take effect, right? Oops, that wasn't, you know, I'll get a little, clean that up just a little bit. There we go. And actually this whole finger is in gonna be darker. This was a nice uh, shadow tone here. And you can see, the shadows are all on the um, side, the, the bottom of the hand, because the light, a lot of light's coming from this side. All right. So here, and we're still being loose, still not uh, being too picky about uh, 
about the uh, details. We're, we're, we're looking at the structure. The structure and the shape, the shadow. And I'm just gonna come down here with the wrists. Sometimes that wrist will help you set it off. A little shadow here. And then when we come back in with these highlights, we're gonna make it pop extra. So really look at where those shadows are coming from. Squint your eyes so that you don't get stuck on those details right away. All right. Lighten this display a little bit. Keep it gray at first. Now we're going to start getting into the highlights. I'm moving fast, and fast is, fast is the way right now because we're not getting caught up in thinking too much. We're just doing. Think less, do more. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking at, I'm squinting. I'm looking at the highlights. I see that there's highlight uh, mostly on this right side. So, uh, I'm going to take another brush because right now is where it's going to be handy to blend since this gray is still wet. And see that blend really uh, makes it pop. So this blending is, 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 is called a gradient or an ombre effect. You, depending on what field you're in. Um, but in ours, it's, it's a gradient and uh, it's really beneficial uh, to learn to blend, especially wet paint into wet paint as I'm doing right now. You can move it around with your finger too, which I, I like to do. Uh, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Um, just kind of push and pull that paint around sometimes uh, if you have a lot of paint, use a bigger brush. But this is a dry brush. There's no paint on it. It's just a clean, dry brush. And see how I'm just using it to blend that color in there. I'm looking at the bones. See how the, the finger bones kind of jut out a little bit. So those I'm starting to think about the details. I can't do that. Don't do that. Don't go into the details. Not yet. Stick with the highlights and the shadows. Stick with the major features. Try to get that nail in there. Blending is fun, but be careful that you don't overdo it. I'm um, squinting, squint, squint, squint. Squint your eyes so that you can see the light and the dark, the dark and the light together. Smaller brush for a smaller area. Um, I'm gonna get my, my uh, dark brush too, because uh, I don't want to lose those shadows. So now I'm to the point where I'm just kind of pushing and pulling, um, squinting my eyes. I'm looking at where the darker areas. It does also help if you have, um, if you have more dynamic light, um, more dramatic light. Uh, if you have hard shadows, it's easier to see the, the form. Right now, my light is kind of flat. The shadow over here is not so hard, uh, and the light here is not so so bright. So, I'm I'm having to uh, make that contrast for myself. 
uh, I'm adding more contrast. Wherever I see the darkest area, I'm adding the most amount of black. And from there, I know that's my, my shadow, the darkest area. So then I can work to light from that. And if you squint, you can see the lightest areas too. And you can start to work with what you have. And this will just help you even more uh, become a, a better artist. You're, you can turn this little study into a work of art. You know, you could do another one here, another one here. And before you know it, you have a cool little series of studies that um, can actually be little works of art that you can sell. Um, I, and, uh, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir here. So I'm going to be doing these things with you. I hope you're going to be doing these things with me and we'll, we'll get creative together. All right. So I'm getting the nails in there a little bit here, a little too much. He's back, rewind, relax. Kind of move, I'm moving fast, but I'm moving with intention. You know, I'm saying, okay, I want the nail, boom. I want the highlight for the nail, boom. I want the highlight for the knuckle, boom. Need a little more white for the highlight. All right, so I'm squinting, highlight, Highlight, move it, highlight here on the nail. Squinting, I'm looking where the highlights are blending a little bit where it's needed, maybe not everywhere. All right here. Uh, how did I have my hands like this? Okay. <laughs> I like to kind of wipe. I like the, the look of the wipe from the finger. It gives it a, a, a cool kind of a movement. Um, another thing that's gonna help is if I start adding um, a little background shading as well. So getting those highlights in here, working my way kind of from dark to light. There's a shadow here. I mean, a highlight. Just talking to yourself, got to talk to yourself. I'm starting to get into the dirty details now. Um, I'm paying attention to the little subtleties in the light. Um, Just bit by bit. There is a little reflected highlight over here because there is light coming from this side, just not as strong as the other side. So I want to indicate that. And um, when I come in here, with the uh, with the outline, kind of pick out the shadows a little more in the highlights. Pushing and pulling. So I need to make these shadows a little more contrasting because 
right now they're just a little too uh, they're not as dynamic. I want this hand to have a little more contrast. There, that kind of helps. You still see the highlight underneath, even though you covered it. So those little subtle things are gonna help. So this looks better. I needed to make my darks darker. Sometimes uh, it's easy to be delicate with the work. Um, that's something that I am definitely guilty of. You, it becomes precious and you're like, oh, I don't wanna make a mistake. It look, it's looking good. I kind of like where it's at, you know, but you have to uh, kind of let loose and, and allow yourself to um, uh, not make the work precious. When it becomes precious and when it becomes, you know, like, to, to uh, uh, then you then you slow down and you stop thinking. You know you don't want to do that. You don't want to slow down and stop thinking. I mean you you want to speed up and 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 think but feel you know. All right so. Uh, I need a little more highlight here. I need to make my whites wider. So I'm gonna really come in here now and pick out those highlights a little bit more. Squint my eyes. Squint my eyes and look at the lights. Don't be precious. Just loosen up. Look at those lights. Look at those darks. All right. This is this is coming to a kind of a cool place where I'm ready to start um, trying new things. You know, you could spend forever working on the details and things, but I want to get to a, another larger painting and uh, maybe do some hands and a face you know, combine different parts. All right, so that's kind of looking cool. I think this comes down a little more. Yeah. This is probably a little bit longer here. I like blending with my fingers. Not everyone's into it. All right, this is looking cool. Um, let me just get a few more highlights in here, actually, because a little more highlights is going to really make it look better. Um, okay, so I'm going to come in here and outline a little bit too to clean up the edges. Cleaning up the edges now. All 
looking at the negative space, looking at the outline. Um, this one. And this one. Notice how the fingers taper in at the edges when they get to the tips, fingertips. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, we're a little bit over. All right, I'll clean this up and then we'll just kind of finish this up a little bit. Since this is looking pretty good. Um, I'm noticing this needs to come in a little bit more. There we go. Um, and now, uh, I think we're ready to do a little background. Just like that. So this little study can become a little work of art. So I'm gonna get Another paper. Hold it. Now I want this to be the dark over here and the light over here. I'm going to reverse it a little bit. Ooh, I like how it does these cool little unexpected effects. I love these little unexpected effects. Turn it, make it easier to spray. We'll make it look like the light is coming from the hand. I love spray paint. Try not to mess up what I just did. Oh yeah.
Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Trying to get the curve of the fingers. I'm just spraying the can along the, I'm basically spraying the paper and it, and the overspray is creating the, the lines. So I like, I like this. Kind of turned out cool. If you're using spray paint, make sure you uh, have proper ventilation. I have my fan going in the background. Um, I do have a mask. Um, just make sure you take care of that that health. Can't can't take that for granted. All right, so. Let me clean up the edge here and then we'll probably call it good. I might do a little bit more shading in the background, but I really like this black and white, uh, black and white piece that we have here. And there we go. Do a little bit of shading in here. Ooh. This is cool. I kind of do a little laser. <laughs> The laser light, laser light action. Few more touches and then we'll call it. I wanted to shade that anyway, so let's do this. Just a little highlight. All right. There. Cool. 
Cool. Well, I hope you guys have fun. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the end result. You can put it this way works best. This way is cool too. All right. Thanks for, oh, wait, before you go, I wanted to show you the finished result from last week, just because I'm proud of it. So this is, uh, this is what, what we did last week with the spray paint. Um, I obviously added a little bit more to it. You can see I added uh, my glue paint mixture to it. Uh, I, I added some more color. Um, and I added uh, a little bird and some flowers, some feathers, little peacock feather. So this one I was thinking about togetherness. I was thinking about friendship, love, and all that good stuff. So um, I'll, I'll probably develop the hand a little bit more um, and see what happens with that. But yeah, you know, keep going. Uh, don't stop. Stay creative, stay funky, stay fresh. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for joining us.